Hello. Hi, uh, this is Raghuram and uh, I am from Arctic Indian. So today we, uh, I'm going to discuss about IP and gaming. And before we actually start, uh, if there are people who are going to join a bit late, a uh, brief about me. Uh, my full name is Raghuram Vajrajan and I've been with Arctic for the last 15 months. Prior to that, I was working with CPA and I started my career with CPA in the year 2006. After that, I have uh, I joined Parenta, which is a startup, and now I'm the startup. So, uh, let's wait for a couple of minutes for participants. So uh, if you have any questions, you can just type it in the chat box so that you know um, I can I can uh, look into it when the time comes and answer it, answer your questions. Okay, so. Uh, Let's start with the, the session today. So uh, it's going to be about IP and uh, I mean gaming and how IP is related to gaming. And we'll be covering these topics today, which uh, we'll start off with you know a brief overview about you know what does gaming industry look like and what are the types of gaming we have, and then how how we how, how does gaming and IP converge. And then what is the current uh, scenario of gaming in India? We'll, we'll touch on copyrights of brief because that's, that's one of the major uh, IP rights that you can file uh, in the gaming industry. Then we look at some filing trends worldwide, India, and how we can monetize. And then we'll touch about, uh, we'll, last we'll talk about, you know, what's the future of gaming in India. So this is a brief overview about the topics. So first, so gaming uh, is starting to become you know important and more specifically innovative sector in today's technology world. I mean, uh, it's 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 just that you know it's it's an immersive and entertaining uh, way that it is. Uh, it's it's it's, it's Becoming an entertainment industry as a whole. See, if you look at it, uh, like who doesn't play games nowadays? You know, uh, there's a mobile. There's you know, hell a lot of uh, uh, devices on which you can start playing. And the reason why it is growing is it's immersive. So immersive, like you know, once you start, you just you know uh, want to keep on playing, and it's entertaining. So, uh, just to give an example. When the Ludo King, you would have heard about the thing Ludo King uh, app, the game. So when we started, it said that, you know, my family used to sit in the room, all four, we have a mobile and you would have the Ludo King install, you play. So it's so entertaining, immersive, and you, you want to involve, you get involved. So that's why, you know, it's such a innovative sector in today's technology growth. And 3 billion people all over the world, and it's a 300 dollar, I mean, three dollar, three hundred billion dollar revenue generating uh, uh, sector or uh, industry which is there. And the major reason for this is the network connectivity, the growth, the smartphones, the network, the, all these uh, technological growth has helped 
the gaming industry per se to grow, especially the cloud-based gaming where you know you would. Uh, so when it's, it, you don't have to have anything on the just a mobile phone, a smartphone, and that's it. Uh, you 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 can play. You can start playing game. So this is the game, and it's it's the boom is just started. At, especially if it's if you talk about India, though worldwide, yes, it, it is it is it has been there for some time. But India has just started, and I hope you know you people are ready to invest not your money but your time, so that you know when when actually it grows. To an extent, you you would you would have uh, you would have made some money out of it. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the gaming types. So traditionally, gaming types are well, there are lots of gaming types. The first and foremost, which you used to do is you know PC gaming, where you know you have you download, you install it on a PC, a desktop PC, not the laptop. Okay, nowadays it's laptop, but I'm talking about days that you know you would have a desktop, you would have your games, and then uh, use your keyboards, mouse, or gamepad to play. So those are the types of, I mean, a PC gaming where you'd have a specific software. Then came the console-based gaming. The console-based gaming are also there when where you know you had the speed. I mean, the car racing where you know you would compete with each other. You have this joystick. So those are the old console based. Even Mario, for that matter, you would you would have a box where you fix a cartridge, and then you could play it on a TV or something. So that those are old console based gaming. The newer versions are the PlayStation, the Xbox, and stuff like that. Of course, cloud gaming. I mean, I don't have to you know let you I mean uh, explain more about what cloud gaming is. It's hosted on a cloud server, and you know you don't need to buy any other. Expensive console, say like Xbox or PlayStation, you would want to buy console. But in cloud-based gaming, there is no need for console. And the good examples are, you know, Stadia, which has been launched by Google, and Luna, which is launched by, which is the Amazon-based platform. So these are the two gaming platforms, cloud-based gaming platforms for uh, by uh, the cloud-based gaming platform. Okay. Next is mobile gaming. Okay, I, I don't know if anybody. Uh, I'm not aware of the age group, but yes, down uh, some uh, couple of decades ago, Tetris and Snake. When if people are aware, they had this Nokia phone wherein you know you had one, multi, uh, two lines or three lines of you know <laughs> device, the screen of the device, and the Snake and the Tetris used to be the you know, mobile-based gaming. So those are the mobile-based gaming. Nowadays, of course, with the advent of smartphone, there are much much you know different kind of mobile games that are available and one type of gaming which is gaining prominence nowadays is the e-sport now what is e-sport okay so e-sport is a type of gaming wherein you know you will have professional players like you know they form the team okay and then they compete with other teams in a professional manner so then there there are organizations which you know which have the regular uh, yearly or you know bi yearly or whatever period they choose they have their tournaments and professional teams they play i mean they pay and play for play those so some good examples are you know the counter strike and the league of legends okay so so this e sport is actually gaining popularity all over the world so much so that uh, in 2028 olympic games uh, it is likely that you know and since it's in los angeles it's likely that you know it could be introduced as a new sport wherein they would check you know they would it's likely that they can start it off as a uh, practice or you know initial new game so that's a new type of gaming called the e sport okay so now let's converge when I mean, we have been no ip but then we have seen a bit about gaming how does it look like when we know we have this ip and gaming converging see gaming is an idea it's your creativity you can build a game thinking about you know what you like okay so that's an idea and when you put it to practice that you i mean that means you know if you if you develop that game for others to play so then you have made it into a tangible product and any tangible product has a risk of getting stolen Right, you know, 
people can copy your avatars your logos the device you know the type of uh, controllers that you develop so all this risk is there so protect it using the appropriate ip any game or anything that has been converted into a tangible product it's always better to protect it using the appropriate ip i mean uh, it depends okay and it that they that was a saying without ip probably it's game over for the gaming industry so that's that's the you no know, the catch word if you don't protect your game with ip it's game over for you so that's that's a catch word okay so now coming into what are the types of ip that you can protect and what kind of ip and what what can be protected under those type of ips so basically it's uh, uh, patents in the patents you have you know both utility and design you have you can have the game controllers you know the type of controllers the kind of you know chips that goes inside those controllers the devices itself and the method of play like okay uh, you have this level you have these uh, uh, obstacles and something like that and what you, what to do when you know reach this level what is your objective something like that. so that's the storyline or the process or method of play so you would generally want to you know protect these type of inventions under patents and the most uh, mostly you will have filed a ip in your copyright which is you know which is called uh, when you have your software the source code which can be you know copyright protected and also we have got something called the tpm technological protection measures for copyrights so what are these tpms are these are digital protections that is available for your copyright protected ip now examples of this is software locks when i by software locks i mean you know uh, like unless until you clear level 3 you cannot go to level 4 or you know uh, unless until you have your uh, you have uh, these many points uh, some kind of uh, you know uh, weapon or something will not be made available to you so these are the technological protection measures available for copyright and the other type of thing is time based access so now time based access is something you know like you you have this access for sir this many hours or you know it is available for so that's the time based access which you can have it under the uh technological protection measure, measures for the copyright so that i mean it, these are just examples and there are a lot of tpms or you can say digital rights management uh, techniques available for protecting your copyright so that you know uh your hard your you know creative solutions for game is not being copied by others and then the last one is i am not the last but yes trademarks so you would like the names the logos the brand okay so these can all be protect in that you know take a good uh, example like i'm going to take the mario example very much okay uh, super mario bros so that's that's the good old game which you know we grew up playing so so that so if you want if if you, if if somebody created you know a fake or a duplicate mario how would you know which mario to play uh, there are lots of features available so even for that matter any game which is you know it's original like ludo king or pubg there are hundreds of pubg i mean or people can make hundreds of pubg so which one do you, which one is the real one and which was the fake one so help you distinguish it from the original from the duplicate you would want to you know have your names and logos and have anything that you know identifies your brand we protected it as the trademarks right so <clears throat> moving on we'll just go uh, quickly have a overview of what's happening in the gaming industry in india okay so uh, being in india teen patti okay that's the that's the most popular game it's by octro which is an indian company and ludo king which i said which is the most uh, uh, i mean at least i i and my family play ludo king very often so that's from gameshin and pubg of course that's the i mean that was i don't know malab there was some ban and i'm not uh, 
very well converse with PUBG and what's its status right now. But yes, it is, it is, it's the most popular. And then in India, we have certain companies like Mobswave, SVAP, Infotech, and now Games to Win. Now, these are companies to whom people outsource their game development.
like so so these these companies they don't develop names under their own name but there are companies i mean there are game developers or uh, who are who outsource their development to these companies and then they build it and then the creator of the game publishes it under his name so a good example of this is the rummy so there are lots of rummy based you know uh, uh, apps nowadays so most of the rummy based apps you find that it is it is by way of you know the outsource companies i mean these companies they developed it and you know and the publisher has published it and winzo uh, which is uh, which is an indian based company has entered into a partnership with tension games okay and it is it is thinking of you know enabling pubg mobile gaming tournament so so this is the kind of esport which i was talking about earlier so it's a kind of you know esport kind of uh, environment and there have been there are talks going on about that for you know popularizing gaming in india of course there are there have been some foreign investment where you know rockstar games has acquired gruva interactive which is again you know outsourcing company which develops uh, gaming bazi games is to invest you know 5 million in india by in 2028 it had plans okay <coughs> and moonfrog lads and octro octro which you know which is the team party thing they have had their first uh, investment from sequoia capital sequoia capital is one of the leading venture capitalist firms so there has been you no know, no considerable investment for game development in indian companies and it's 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 going to grow it's growing day by day okay so now uh, just a brief look at uh, what are the car- i mean copyrights how uh, what kind of a copyrights can you protect uh, because copyrights is mostly creative and game development requires creativity lot of creativity so copyright is the most uh, filed uh, ip when it comes to gaming okay so the first thing that you can what you can protect is the mario which i was talking about it's 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 a character in a game and it has been protected under copyright until 2020 2080 sorry so anybody who wants to you know build a look like or you know develop something similar to the character of the game super mario they'll have to get it licensed from the owners so this is uh, a copyright you know this is why you know you would want to copyright your characters you know and nobody can use the term mario so it's it's mario is the copyright of the game production company and the next is the gameplay you know your story line okay level 1 you have to do this level 2 you have to do this the kind of obstacles so all these story line the gameplay per se that can be copyrighted so you 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 might be thinking what what will happen if i you know the story line what will i get by protecting the copyright so nobody else can actually you know uh copy the same obstacles copy the same uh, level the difficulties the story in a fake game they'll have to do it differently or if they want to do it they'll have to get your license okay so that's the second uh, i mean another kind of you know copyright you can have the next is the sounds and the music and you know, for that matter even the dialogue let's say you know in a game you have something like amita bachan speaking or you know somebody in a voice speaking so even the dialogues you know uh, uh let's assume that you know there is a dialogue very famous dialogue which i recently i remember is you know from the movie top gun so if, if you want to protect some creative dialogues that you have created in your game you cannot of course protect uh, anybody else copyright but yes if you have created your own so those dialogues and those musics can be copyright protected of course artwork and visual design this is this is something you know which is the basis of copyright so these can be protected under uh, copyright of course the software the source code those can be protected one interesting thing is and uh, the object code of a source like uh, you have when when you have a software you have source code and object code the object code is simply you know bits ones and zeros the object code can be reverse engineered so reverse engineering is something which you know which you try to recreate the original so i mean original game from the object 
I mean, our object is the how we are playing it, the ones and zeros. So this, when you reverse engineer, is considered as a fair use. And this was, you know, uh, this uh, judgment was passed in a case where it's called the Sega versus Dakile. It's a long time ago. It, it, it was, you know, it was in 1990s. But yes, this was passed that, you know, recreating, reverse engineering the from the object code will be considered under the fair use. Of course, there is a catch to that. Even though there were multiple counts of uh, infringement or infringement activities uh, filed by Sega against Akile, Akile just won the one instance wherein, you know, one count wherein, you know, it was the object code reverse engineering in fair use. Sega won the other, other three counts because they actually had the copyright protected for their software. So this gives a good message, even though object code can be considered as fair use, if you have your source code copyrighted, you would still go and win and they cannot copy it or produce a similar game as yours because it's already copyright protected. And then the other things which you can, you know, uh, copyright is, you know, the player license, the time, the number of times you can play, the number of, for a certain number of period you can play or you can play only for five minutes or five times or 10 times. So these player licenses can also be copyright protected. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, next, we'll briefly follow us filing trend, what's happening. How are the filings happening worldwide in India? So if you see the first top five patent filing in India, obviously you have the Microsoft, the Sony, the Tencent, these are the top filers in India. And the areas in which they are filing, the categories in which they are filing are, they are filing in the virtual reality, which is now up, upcoming. You have your, you know, AR, VR games, where you, you would have your uh, headsets and you get, that's where you get the immersive uh, experience. Now you, you are into the game, you are inside the game. So that's, that's where you get the immersive experience of the game. So there have been a lot of filings in the virtual reality games. And of course, gaming as a general, like mobile gaming. And so that's where India filings are happening generally. And when it comes to worldwide, it is, uh, it's gaming machine or console. So in, in worldwide uh, scenario, the gaming machines are much more, you know, uh, prominent than the mobile gaming. So that's why you would see that in the worldwide uh, scenario, you have the game machine or the console based gaming that's that's having more number of filings and if you see the uh, revenue or the funding amount you you would have these tencent epic games magic leap zigna so these have had the maximum funding uh, raised during this and you might be wondering where is the where are the top people the microsoft and the sony and the ibm so if, well they are there they still have big 10 billion plus uh, revenue, estimated revenue range is having 10 billion plus, 10 billion plus, I'm sorry, but their funding is zero. So that's why, you know, they, they appear bottom uh, in of the list when it comes to, you know, how much funding was paid. So if you see the funding amount is, is, is more when it comes to, you know, people with, uh, I mean, these Sony's and IBM's are, you know, they, they have their own source of uh, income or, uh, they are you know, top notch, top, uh, top Fortune 50 companies. So they, they don't want the funding. But when it comes to smaller companies, the funding plays a major role. And this is the amount of funding that has been raised. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to uh, quickly uh, go through a, a, a dashboard which uh, which. Uh, So this is a kind of a dashboard which we create for, you know, uh, uh, any, any sector wherein, you know, you would say that, okay, this is uh, a gaming industry or, or, you know, uh, or a quantum computing industry. So this is the technology and all these charts, which you were seeing earlier, where they were created by this, uh, using this, uh, Google dashboard. Okay. So here you can see that, you know, 
there are different ways of uh, okay taking some time to load because it has to get the data from the server so so here we we we, we create or you know we uh, analyze the data for the gaming industry for a particular set of game or a pc games or you know mobile games because when you when you go for gaming it it will become too broad and the data set to be too large you can see that you know already the number, the kind of data that we have put into it it's it's, uh, it's not uh, it's taking too much time so we try to restrict and prepare it for you know certain specific set of domain and you know restrict it to certain type or category okay you'll have to but yes but what what can happen is uh, the overall gist is that you will have lots of filters here like uh, if you if it opens i can show you but there are lots of filters which you can you know uh, play with get some key insights on to you know the kind of data that is presented okay like uh, the filing the filing in the uh, mobile gaming sector i mean sorry the gaming console sector is more worldwide rather than in india so you you could get some uh, meaningful insights from the charts and the and the <coughs> information that is presented here which would help you in okay so if this in, this is where people are filing so maybe you know i, I and there are no are there small players are there bigger players are there individual assignees so if there are individual assignees so th that means you know i can acquire them or license from them because that would be much cheaper so these kinds of insights you 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 can get it from this uh, dashboard and i'm sorry but it's taking it too long so i would i would uh, let it run i can see by the end of the session if it comes up turns up i can share it but we'll continue with the uh, presentation okay and so here is uh, how do you monetize it? of course there are two two ways of monetizing ip which is acquiring and then you know licensing licensing will we need to i mean it, it has to happen whenever using your protected and i mean your ip copyrights or patents you want to use and build a game you will have to license that and then you have this uh, acquisition so the best i mean in 2022 this activision blizzard acquisition by microsoft so that's the biggest deal you know of 68.7 billion dollars so this is uh, one of the biggest acquisition made by microsoft and it, it has happened in year 2022 so this itself will say i mean uh, will will give you a clear idea that you know what's the kind of money that's involved and what and how gaming is you know going to be uh, in the future so if you see that it's indian gaming industry is going to be you know dollar 5 billion by 2025 and it's it's by bcg cpi india report which says that you know it's going to be that huge and the reason for that is first is the number of users you know there are lots of uh, india's obviously you would know that you know it's a prime market so there are lots of users with smartphone and the, you know the technology so 4g the 5g technology so it's it's the mobile gaming industry especially the mobile and cloud gaming uh, industry that's that's going to be you know a major uh, source of uh, i mean the major growth happening in that sector however if you look it has got the lowest average revenue per user when it comes to asian or for that matter uh, worldwide when the, in asia it's the lowest so what is the what is this arp use okay if i'm a gaming user okay what is the revenue that uh the company or the game creator is going to get by my playing of uh, by me playing a game like for example if i gay if i play a ludo king how much do i spend on ludo king so that the company which is creating good ludo king will get a revenue so this is i mean so for india this is the lowest and why is that is it's a young generation of okay, people that are the young generation people are playing more than the older generation which is which is not a very specific thing but yes the people the young generation here have not been you know used to the console based gaming where you know in console based gaming you will have to buy you have to buy the cd you have to spend so all those spending was not here 
you started the gaming when it was all free and the same gets to purchasing potential because of the revenue income income of the people which is generally less you would generally tend not to buy like there are lots of you know in game advertisement or in game purchases where you buy and play so those yes those are very less the purchasing potential of indian user is very less so that's the reason why we have the lowest average revenue per user but yes with the growth it is uh, it is still it is still growing it's a, it's got the fastest growing in among the asian countries the growth rate of people adopting uh gaming or you know the time the how much time they are playing so those things are growing the ip filings are growing uh which i would i can say i mean i Let me check. Yes, so <coughs> okay, the IP filings in India are growing. So that means you know the lot of companies who are trying to you know maximize their revenue out of the IP they have. And if you see so the overall is there are these are the sectors where you know there's a direct revenue, there's indirect revenue. pc base pc gaming mobile devices okay so this is the direct revenue and this is the indirect revenue totally it's about 300 billion dollars which was predicted so if you see so here is the thing for the so this is india base i have restricted to india so now if you see here okay now 91 publications are from individual assignees so what so what i would i would take it from this is okay there are individual creators individual creators of game who are try who are filing it on their own they are not associated with microsoft or ibm or any big company so so these people either they want to license it or you know they it could be much more cheaper than the other or i can go ahead and acquire it i can i mean some big companies even for big company if i was a microsoft i would say go and say okay if you have this ip for this i'm going to buy it from you so so this is some insight that you can get from this dashboard and if you see the filing has been growing uh steadily so it's from this side okay so you see the filing has been growing uh, steadily but the 19 20 21 because we get there's a delay of 18 months between filing and the publication of ticket so you might not get the full trend of this thing but yes on the whole it is you know there is a increasing filing trend in india when it comes to ip based filing of course the overall is the us which is the wrong us is the top most filing nation india is second best because this is only india based you will have india if you do, if you look worldwide then japan us and ep these are the three places where you know china for that matter china japan us china and korea these are the top filing countries when it comes to worldwide ip filing okay so uh, with that uh, i would be happy for any questions or any anything you know uh, you would have you can just type it on the chat box and i'll be happy to answer it one by one at a later time so uh any questions okay thank you all those who participate uh, participate in this session and uh, i i hope you know it was informative and uh, if there are any questions i'll i'll leave the session open so that you know you can type and uh, type in the chat box and i you know i can i can either answer it immediately or you know if time permits uh, or if later on uh, after the session